Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the HA1 UV from Islands or Redivis. And this radio's got a couple of features that are really worth checking out. And we'll get to it right after this. The items you get in the box, you get a charging cradle, belt clip, programming cable, 2800 milliamp hour battery, the antenna, wrist strap, owner's manual, and the charging cable. This charging cable fits two purposes. One, you can use it with the charging cradle, and on the back of the battery, you can also charge it with the USB-C portion. At the time of filming this video, if you go to the Redivis website, you can get the HA1UV for 49 bucks. This thing is five watt IP67, which means it can be submerged for a half an hour in one meter of water. Here they talk about the IP67. It is a two meter, 70 centimeter radio. And you can buy the same radio as a GMRS. You can get a four pack, even a 10 pack. This shows some of the easy to use features about it. Again, the two meter, 70 centimeter, one meter of water. Talking about the battery, it's a 2800 milliamp hour battery. It, the battery is USB-C rechargeable, 1.77 inch screen. There are firmware upgrades. Show you how to do that on the next upgrade. The side buttons below the PTT button are programmable and you can lock out all the buttons. Again, by using the emergency button up here, that orange one, you can send out an emergency signal. It does have the NOAA and you can set up a NOAA weather alarm, especially if you live in a place that is prone to having really bad weather. This shows you what comes in the box, the programming cable, bell clip, hand strap, type C charging cable, which either works with just the battery or in the charging base and the battery and an owner's manual. Here's some specs on the radio. You can also get it on eBay, or correction, on Amazon. It's about a dollar more, but there is a 5% coupon currently going on at the time of this video. They even have one that has a longer antenna you can buy, about a 15 inch, I think. It has all the same information as the website. Let's take a quick tour of this radio, starting with the left side, you have your push to talk button. These two buttons are programmable. On the top, you have this loop for the wrist strap, the power volume knob. This selector knob helps you move around the menu as well as changing whatever frequencies you have programmed to the radio. This orange button is an emergency button. You have your antenna. This indicator light here shows whether you're transmitting or receiving. On the right side, you remove this cover to put in a, either an external microphone or charging cable or correction programming cable and it does require a specific kind you can't just use the regular two-prong Kenwood style cable on the front you have your microphone up here the speaker 1.77 inch color screen your keypad and these buttons all serve a dual function for moving around the menu quicker on the back you charge through USB-C, you have your charging indicator light, red for charging, green for charged. And you use this right here to remove the battery. I'm going to take a quick look at the menu right quick. To get in there, hit menu. Now you can go through the menu by using these arrows or the selector knob up here at the top. Starting off with the radio section, has display mode, and this will give you a choice. You can use display it as a frequency, name, or channel. For me, I prefer name. Band setting, this will show band A and band B, or you can select one or the other. It's for adjusting the backlight. The brightness is adjusted by using the selector knob at the top. And then you can use the arrows down here for how long you want the backlight to stay on. You have key function, audio, this includes your mic gain, and you have normal, strengthen, and low. You have Vox, power save, menu timeout settings, 
language, all you get is English, that's your only choice. Save channel, radio information, tells you about your personal radio. Then it goes back to the top. Zone, zone is kind of like memory banks. Just go in there. If you want to add a zone, like for example, I'll add California, I'll edit the name and you treat the buttons like the old cell phones. And you wait for a second, and then you can use that one again. And once you have it, hit select, go down to save, and then you can see we have California. If you wanna add another one, click the add, edit name, and this time we'll do Nevada. And if you go Keep going around, it'll go to a lowercase letter as well. Hit select again, save, and there you have them both. And now you can put whatever frequencies you want inside each one of these. And you can divide it up however you want. Channel, this is where you'd program your frequencies in. And they have the scanning, signaling, gives you common setting as well as DTMF, emergency, call tones, FM radio, that's for your commercial FM stations, weather, you can set a weather alarm, it's a great idea for places that have really bad weather, and it'll also give you the NOAA channel list, factory reset, and then it takes you back to the top. One of the features I really like about this radio is if you notice on a lot of the Chinese radios, like this TID radio and the Baofangs, you'll see that the male post right here is in the radio, which means if you break this post, this radio is worthless. However, the red of this put the female side in the radio, similar to how Yesu or ICOM does it. This way you have the post in the antenna. You break the post in the antenna, no big deal. Toss the antenna, get another one, you're not out of radio. I'd like to see more of the radio companies that come from China do this. It makes a hell of a lot more sense to me. As mentioned before, per the manual, this radio is supposed to put out five watts of power. That will show up right here. We have the radio going into this meter, going into a dummy load. The large numbers down here, that's for your SWR. And again, your power is right up here. First, we're going to start out with 2 meter calling frequency, and then we'll switch down to the 440 calling frequency, both on high power, as you can see by the little H. Let's see what we get. We're at 4.91. That's great. That's better than a lot of the radios I've seen. Now switch down to channel B. And we'll try 440. And we're over five watts. Highest I think I saw there was 5.10. It settled down at about 5.04, which is great. Now we've got to know that this radio is putting out what it advertises. Now we're going to take a quick look at the spectral purity, make sure that this radio is legal to use per the FCC on the ham radio bands. As you can see, we've got the blue line set up, and anything we'd put out has to be below that, 40 dB from the primary. We've got a harmonic here on two. We're going to let this settle down. Okay, as you can see up there at the second delta harmonic, we're negative 54 dB below, which makes that legal. Plus, we're below the 25 microwatt line. So this is perfectly legal to use on the ham radio bands here in the U.S. per the FCC. I'm going to show you real quick how to program a repeater in using the front panel here. First thing you want to do is make sure you're in VFO and the way you switch back and forth from VFO to memory is you press and hold the exit button. See how it switches back to channel one? And we're back in VFO one. The frequency, the way you're gonna do this, you're gonna go into menu, channel, 
And we'll put this at channel four. I'm gonna select channel alias, get to the end, hit the exit button to get rid of those. And we're gonna put in Clara. And you treat the buttons like the old cell phones. Once you have it, hit select, and it's going to ask you to save. Then you can go down, double check your bandwidth. Yes, we are on wide, so we're good there. Your receive frequency, in this case it's 145220. Then you go down to your transmit frequency, and in this case we're 144620. Choose your CTCSS. We do not have a receive one, but we do have one for transmit. So we use the knob up here at the top. Pick the one you want. We want 103.5. Once you have the one you want, hit menu again to save. And you can change the squelch level from here if you want. I think three is just fine. You can change your transmit power, we'll leave it at high. You have some different things, you can do Vox if you want. You see how it says Clara down here. Go back out to the main screen, press and hold. Okay, we get this programmed up. Let's see if we can't get the repeater to come back to us, or maybe somebody's out there. WJ6F testing. Well, as you heard, the repeater came back to us, so we definitely know we got a program properly. You can program this using a computer programming software from the Redivis site, and in the next video, I'll show you how to do that. To be honest about this radio, it actually really impressed me. I'm glad to see that finally there's a radio that not only puts out the power that it says it's rated for, it also is, has a clean harmonics. And they put the antenna, in my opinion, configured the right way, where you have the post on the antenna itself and the female side in the radio. As I said before, this way if that little post breaks, you just toss the antenna and get another one instead of having to toss the whole radio. It is a very sturdy radio. I like the fact that it's IP67 rated, giving you that half hour under one meter of water. The radio seems like it can take a few drops without having any problems. This is definitely going to be a radio that I keep in the car with me. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos? And again, thanks for watching.